the examples in the Bible given to us and what our daughters should be like. The first woman we're going to look at is probably a woman that we already thought about her name is Ruth. In Ruth chapter 2, we're not going to study the whole book. We're just going to study the character of Ruth. Verse 2. And Ruth the Moabitess. Now her family is of Lot. After an uh, incestual relationship with his daughters, one daughter produced a child named Moab. Moab would not help Israel and they were forbidden. But thank God it said Moabites, not Moabitress. Ruth said unto Naomi, Let me now go to the field and glean ears of corn after him in whose sight I shall find grace, the owner of the land. And she said unto her, Go, my daughter. So here's a woman who's in a land that's not her land. She has come into this land for God. Chapter 1. She offers and is not told to go to work. Ruth's character is, I got to work to get food. That's what our daughter should be like. She is an illegal alien in Israel from Moab, Deuteronomy 23.3. But she came in the name of God, Ruth 1. She needs to eat and she seeks work to do it. And a great, great, great grandwoman, grandmother of David, and a great, 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 great grandmother of Jesus Christ sought work. Verse 7. And she said, I pray you, let me clean, glean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves. So she came and has continued even from the morning until now that she carried a little in the house. Now, Boaz has asked his, his servant, who's that woman over there? And the servant speaks up. She's polite. And she seeks permission to be in this field. She doesn't come in here, oh, I'm a Moab rights. I'm a woman. You're some... no, she walks up to you and says, can I glean after the reapers? It's early morning. She has no husband. She's a widow. And she continues. She has not stopped working. And it says, tarried a little at the house. There wasn't much time wasted. She did her business in the house and got right back to work. She went to the water cooler and got a drink of water and came back to work. She went into the potties, did her business, and came back to work. And this is not Ruth speaking. This is the servant of Boaz speaking. What will people say about our daughters when our daughters don't even know they're being watched? That's character. Ruth 2.10 Then she fell on her face and bowed herself to the ground and said unto him, Boaz, Why have I found grace in thy eyes? And thou shouldst take knowledge of me, seeing I am a stranger. Ruth is very humble. She does not deserve anything. And she's gratified for the gift of help. And she acknowledges who she is, a stranger. She doesn't lie. She doesn't make believe she's something that she's not. She spells it like exactly who it is. She's speaking now to the owner of the property. She doesn't even know who Boaz is right now. She could have marched up there with signs and lawyer, lawyers and uh, uh, equal justice for Moabites. But she doesn't. And if Boaz would have told her, get out of here, go get another field, I believe she would have, all right, I'm sorry. Would you like what I've gotten already? 211. But if she, uh, before we go to, if she would have been rude and crude, she would have been definitely asked to leave. Definitely ask what she, uh, to leave behind what she's gathered and don't ever come back. 
to 11. Only a miracle you can be cruel and still get something. And Boaz answered and said unto her, Now watch this. It has fully been shown to me all that thou hast done unto thy mother-in-law since the death of thy husband. And now thou hast left thy father and thy mother in the land of thy nativity and are come unto a people which thou knowest not here to for. Her testimony, her character is good. She's helping her mother-in-law since her own husband's death. There's no Bible order for a daughter-in-law to help her mother-in-law. The Bible command we're going to read in Titus later is Ruth is supposed to be helping I mean, Naomi's supposed to be helping Ruth. And in chapter 1, Naomi's trying to get rid of her. Well, I'll, I'll serve your God. And just go back to your people. Go back to your gods. Go. And Ruth's like, no, I want to serve your God. I want to be with your people. I've heard about Israel. I've heard about your God. And his father's like, all right, come on. If you're not gonna go, If you're not going to go back, all right, come on. Death did not cause bitterness. It caused a bond. So look at his Bible character of this woman that we're reading about only four chapters. She's a hard worker. She's got a great character. We can't find anything wrong with her. And she's a widow. And she's a stranger in the land of Israel. And she's being accepted by her character only. And she came out of the world into the land of God, chapter 1, verse 16. Boaz found out that not only did she come back with Naomi for a free hand, for she came back for God. She told her family and the people of her land, her mother and father, I'm going to go serve the God of Israel. Bye. So God blesses her. So you know you realize if you ever got married and became a widow, you need to put your trust in God. Remember Paul said that a widow is to marry, she's got liberty to marry, but only in the Lord. It's even mentioned that Ruth could have gone and find anybody to marry. And she hasn't yet already. She's saying we have a need for food and I'm going to go get the food first before I even look for a husband. Let me settle myself. 217. So she gleaned in the field until even 6 p.m. Jewish time and beat out that she had gleaned and it was about an ephah of barley. And what she did, she it's like a wheat, barley. You'd pick it and that wasn't it. You had to take what you picked and you had to beat it out to separate the husk from the seed. Then you would have to winnow it. And all that refuge would blow away and leave the seed. So this is a hard work. She picks and she beats herself. 2.18 And she took it up and went into the city. And her mother-in-law saw what she had gleaned. And she brought forth and gave to her that she had reserved after she would suffice. She gives it all to her mother-in-law. She's not selfish. She comes home. There's her mother-in-law. Here's what I got. Gives it to Naomi. So she is a very unselfish, hard-working woman. And she ends up in the line of the Lord Jesus Christ. Rebecca. The next one we're going to look at. Genesis 24. She's another hard worker. Genesis 24. Another model that we kind of should set for our daughters is Rebecca. But realize later on, she does sin in the family way. Her and her husband have favorite children. And it, it, it turns out to be a destruction of a family. But right now, our daughters are not married. 
Rebecca is not married. And let's see what happens. 24, 16. And I trust that, you know, this story has been read by you. And the damsel was very fair to look upon. She was beautiful. A virgin. She's never been with a man before because it says neither has any man known her. Well, look at what the Bible did. The Bible gave you its own definition. She didn't sleep around with other guys. She didn't let other guys touch her. She wasn't the, whatever you want to call it, in your day going to school. And she went down to the well. Well, she had to go down to the well. On the way home, she would have to go up to the well. And filled her pitcher and came up. So going to the well was good. But she had to carry that heavy pitcher coming up. Going to the well was she had chores to do and she did them. Verse 18. And she said, drink my Lord. And she hasted and let down her pitcher upon her hand and gave him drink. She's giving, she's terrible, and she hastes. She wastes no time like Ruth. Ruth went into would do her business, and then she got right back to work. Same thing that Rebecca does. So both Rebecca and Ruth are hard-working women, and they're not married. And they are setting a character in the Bible that we should set for our daughters. And when they do a job, they ought to do the job properly. You're not going to get no credit for a job done terrible. 19. And when she had done giving him drink, she said, I will draw water for the camels also until they have done drinking. Without being asked, she gave the guy a drink of water she put her bucket down in the water gave him a drink then she turns around without being told without being asked says i'm going to feed those camels now it says earlier in the chapter that verse 10 he had 10 camels a camel will drink up to 20 to 30 gallons of water If they were at their thirstiest moment, these camels, she would have to give them to 200, 300 gallons of water. That's a hard working lady. And what she would have to do, she wouldn't turn the nozzle. She wouldn't turn the faucet. She would have to take her, her, her uh, pitcher, go to the well, draw it up, put it in a trough, go back to the well, draw up more water, put it. That's hard work. And she finished the job. She never starts a job and half finishes it. That she wasn't even told to do. She stuck her head out and said, I will, I will give them. 32, 24-32. Our daughters should be looking for work. Things to do. Extra to what needs to be done and the man came into the house and he ungirded his camels and gave straw and provender for the camels and water to wash his feet and the man's feet that were with him and there was set meat before him to eat and he said I will not eat until I have told my errand he said speak on and you find out verse 32 to verse 50 the men of Abraham come into Rebecca's family's house. They're entertained. They have their feet washed. They're getting drinks. They're getting food. They're at the table. They're talking. They're telling the story. When the adults are entertaining, talking, and doing business, Rebecca is not unseen. Unless they want something. When there's important business, when there's entertaining, she's gone. It's not her business. 
She probably has other things to do. She doesn't waste her time with table talk. Verse 50. And Laban and Bethu answered and said, The thing proceeds from the Lord. We cannot speak unto thee, good or bad. The father, never mind the, the brother, but the father gives the approval or disapproval of the marriage as we have studied from the writings of Paul, his epistles. As we saw in Exodus, the father could have told him, no, nope, I'm not giving her. And Abraham's servant, well, okay, I'll go find somebody else. The father says, no, it's no. The daughter disobeys, that's the daughter disobeying. I don't think you ever find anywhere in the Bible where there's a uh, elopement. In the middle of the night, the guy comes with a ladder and takes the girl. I don't think that thing, that story is ever in the Bible. Unless, and if you've seen it and read it, email me, show me. But the father gives the approval or the disapproval. 55. And her brother and her mother said, Let the damsel abide with us for a few days. At the least ten. After that, she will go. You know, let our daughter, let our daughter stay here. Let her say goodbye to her family. And everything like that, it's, it's reasonable. She's not coming back. Let us say goodbye to her friends. In verse 57, they said, We will call the damsel and require at her mouth. And they called Rebecca and sent her to, Will thou go with this man? And she said, I will go. The only question she's asked is, do you go, do you want to go now, or do you want to go in a few days? I'll go. The father said, go marry him, and she did. She never had a say in the whole marriage, except for, I'll go. Maybe she could have said, no, I don't want to go. She's trusting her father so much that, okay, dad, if you approve of it, and you love me, you won't do me harm. You've never done me harm. Okay. So look at the look at the response that the father has of over this woman in Genesis. And this guy that's of Rebecca is not of God, Jehovah of the Bible. But he's got enough sense to know that God's in it and the brother's looking at the money. He's seen the gifts and all that. So I don't even excuse the blood. Later on, this brother causes more trouble for Jacob. And in 65, verse 65, For she had said unto her servant, What man is this that walketh in the field to meet us? And the servant had said, It's my master. Therefore, she took a veil and covered herself. There's the modesty. She put clothes on at the coming of Isaac to be her husband. She put more clothes on. She didn't paint her face. She didn't do her hair. She put that veil on. She's modest. So what we've seen with Ruth and what we've seen with Rebecca matches Paul. What he tells us about a woman. And verse 67. And Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent. She died. And took Rebekah and she became his wife. And he, look what Paul said. Isn't that what Paul said? Loved her. So Genesis 24 comes out of the epistles of what Paul tells us. This obedient woman who's obedient to her father has now come to this guy and she has been modest. She's been proper and now her husband loved her. And Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. She comforts her husband. And she don't ever return back home. She stays with her husband. And in times of need, she comforts him. And he loves her. Those are two remarkable women. That 
if we can find proper books with the Bible, our daughters should study these two women and the cultures. But then again, now we have problems in the Bible. Genesis 3. Now we got women who, you know what? They're not good examples. I know, actually, I know one family that has a Ruth and a Rebecca. Just come to think about it. And those girls are fine and they're 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 precious and they're wonderful. This woman we're gonna look at now, I've never met a woman named Eve. No one's ever, as far as I know, ever named their their daughter, their precious little daughter, Eve. Eve? Really? Oh. I never knew that. So now we're gonna look at Eve versus one through seven, Genesis three, one through seven. You read that all for yourself. But we're going to break down the verses. Verse two, chapter three, verse two. And the woman said unto the serpent, "I guess they weren't afraid of snakes back then." She's talking to a snake. Genesis twelve says that saint, that serpent is Satan. We may we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Eve is doing all the talking. Adam's there. And I'm trying that verse right now. He says, uh, "With him, where's that at? Six. 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 At the end of the verse. Okay, at the end of verse 6, it says he gave unto her husband with her. Adam was, was henpecked. Adam does not say one word at all but her fault. That's the only word ever recorded by Adam except for naming the animal. And this is now bone of my, bones, flesh of my flesh. And then he lets Eve do the talking. And when you let your wife do the talking in the relationship, you got trouble. I'm not, not I'm not saying you don't let her talk at all. Look look at what this woman's going to do with her mouth. Now today we were street we were on the road street preacher. My wife was helping me with a couple uh, just pathetic. And together we were working with the scriptures to try to get these people right. I'm not saying a woman's to be completely silent, but when you do something what Eve is doing, taking control of the family. And the first thing she does is she corrects the word of God by removing the word freely. We ought to, with our daughters, set them forth. If you're going to correct, if you're going to, oh boy, my correct came in. If you're going to quote scripture, you ought to quote it correctly. Even I made, I made a mistake today quoting John the Baptist to say Jesus. Well, no, there's no well. That was wrong. I confess it as a sin and put it under the blood of Jesus Christ. That's wrong. Verse 3. But of the fruit of the... Eve's still talking. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said... All right, she's going to quote God. Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. She falsely quotes from God and then adds, neither shall ye touch it. She has removed and added to the word of God and Adam doesn't speak up at all. Adam doesn't say, hey, dear, that's not what God said, excuse me. I need to get in this conversation and you need to be quiet and let me deal with this guy because you've got it wrong. That's not what I told you. Because Adam had to tell her something because when God commanded him not to eat the fruit, Eve wasn't around yet. As men in our family, when we're going to teach our daughters and our wives the Bible, we better correct the Bible not. Maybe Adam told Eve what God did not say. I don't know. Somewhere someone went wrong. 
and it ought not to be the man of the family. As a man in our family, we're to have the King James 1611 Bible and no other Bible to raise our family. To make sure we got the scripture correct. Somebody did it wrong. And look at the consequences today. Because of this event in Genesis 3 is why we have broken marriages. Because of sin. Six. And when the woman saw that the tree saw, remember we talked about saw, and the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree to desire to make the one wise, she took, she touched the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. She shows the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life in one verse. After she has violated the words of the Lord and then eats the fruit. We've got to teach our children the lust of the eyes, computers, television, media, books, magazines. <coughs> we got to teach our children the lust of the flesh, sexual appetites, eating too much, drinking too much showing too much and we got to teach them the pride of life along with no bible perversion if we set that in our doors we will set them as a good foundation to be wise in the future then the violation of the word gave to the rebellion to her husband and he did eat and he was there and Next time, we're going to get to the virtuous woman. We can't do that now. We're going to get a great study with that, the virtuous woman. And then, Lord willing, we got some little bit of other studies to do in Titus. We, as men of the family, are ought to study women like Rebecca, women like Ruth, women like Mary, Women like Elizabeth, Samson's mother. Will has studied the great women in the Bible that, that loved God and honored God like Hannah. And then draw from them an outline to set for our daughters. And when we've got women like Eve and Jezebel who have done totally wrong, we need an outline of what not to bring our daughters. See, the Bible is, is the instruction of life for all. What we're to do and what we're not to do. It's here in the pages. It's just, you got to read. you got to study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And that includes being a husband, and that includes being a father. That's what the Bible says. 